I'm Susan, and I'm a truck driver. And what is that right there? Is that an old jack? Big hydraulic jack. Okay. I don't feel that I'm a typical woman in the fact that I like things that guys like. My backyard looks like a junkyard. It's like heaven for somebody that's a mechanic, you know, or that likes junk. I'm Charles, and Susan is my mom. My mom's got cars, boats, trailers, RVs, and she's just buying more. It's ridiculous. When they give me excellent prices, I don't care if it's something I don't need. I just get a rush out of getting a good deal. How much is the old toolbox? All right, no fast corners. I'm Jennifer, and Susan is my mom. My mom buys things that she thinks she can fix and sell it for more than she got it for, but that doesn't end up happening. They just end up collecting dust in a junkyard. I'm Mimi, and Susan is my daughter. I just try to do the best I can in the house. I have my wheelchair, and I've done so much all these years in my chair, but there are rooms in the house that are so stacked up I can't get to them or into them. I'm Brandy, and Susan is my aunt. We've been here, and they're gonna lose everything. She may declare bankruptcy, and Mimi may have no place to go. Oh yes, I have anger towards my mom, because we knew it would happen to the money. We knew it would be gone quickly. It's mayhem all the time. <laughs> I've yelled at her many a time before. I'm like, why does this mean more to you than everybody else? This is my only truck that I moved up with, so this one's definitely okay. not going anywhere. What about the next one? Um, My name is Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner specializing in biohazard and hoarding. What are, what are you saying? You want me to junk a running vehicle? Is that what you're saying? We can't even start until we deal with these cars. She has to let go of some of these vehicles or we can't even get in the backyard. Is it running? Because I thought these were all, I thought we were talking about pushing them and towing them because they no, can't No, I just start. said I have some place I can put the vehicles. How many people have gas in their house? <laughs> this is pouring out on the ground. Oh my God. Hold it. I gotta put some more gas in the carburetor. Don't start until I tell you to. We're all gonna blow up. Okay, go for it. Are you ready to start in the backyard? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. I'm gonna get them back here and we'll start going through some of this stuff right here so we can make room to okay. work around this car. Do you want this old doll head? Uh, yeah. I don't, you see a kid playing with this? I guess. None of that goes. That's these are, these are all rusted. Don't you think we ought to get rid of those? No, uh-uh. This was all the safe pile right here. We're trying to haul off as much of my mom's stuff as we can. Can we get rid of this? No, it, you, I told you where to put it, in Mimi's. You didn't tell me what it's for. She's being pretty resistant to things that aren't worth anything. I'm going through there and trying to be as nice as possible. You're not being nice, stuff. Chuck. When you're putting it in the truck without me there, that's not being nice. Where the hell are you in all this? Let's see, where do you think I might have been, Chuck? I don't know, not out here. Yeah, right. She just moves right over them with mockery, sarcasm. Can you go do some big stuff with the guys instead of playing with the little stuff that I need to go through? Would there be any possible way of doing that? Charles is the one person who's standing up and saying, enough is enough. You're not bed keeping frames. bed frames keeping in the backyard. Them. Who's gonna want these? Are you gonna sell You need them to throw them away. Good luck. Flat tires and all. Watch that. Metal. Metal. 
Yep. Oh. Dude, Man, I got what Dang it! My knee is just split wide open. No. This is the problem. Mm. He just fell on this and sliced his leg. Sliced my whole kneecap. He's open. done now. Okay. How many people in this family are going to have to be affected by your mess before you will start letting it go instead of moving it around and stacking it everywhere? This is a serious injury to his leg. We're going to lose him now for the next few days. He's not going to be able to help us at all. And he was the one person that was standing up to her, showing her that he wasn't afraid. And now he's gone. Oh my God. This is all because of your not willing to let go of stuff. When does it sink in? Like, when does it start to affect you? When do you shed a tear when all the rest of your family is? When? I haven't seen a bit of remorse from you yet. I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Cars need to be put on 100% hold. They are not important until all this gets done. This has got to be about Mimi and about the kids and about the people that it's affected and stuff. Everybody's starting to get it, that nobody is important really to Susan, and the kids will not put up with it. Susan is worried about her cars, and that's all she's been thinking about since she got here. And all I want to do is get this place cleaned up. That's why I came here, and that's what's going to happen. I don't give a f what Susan wants. Brandy has had a problem with me for a while, and she feels like that I'm jeopardizing her grandmother's life by having people over to help me fix my cars and bring my junk in and bring my junk out and stuff like that. You know what's going to happen in three days? She's going to lift on Craigslist every single thing that's at that house. She's going to try to f with on Craigslist, and then people are going to be coming over here to meet me. I mean, a sane person would say, Mimi, you're not safe here. I want you to have your own place. I want you to be safe. What we're saying is at this point in time, after all these years, we're not willing to trust you with I'm Mimi's safety her. anymore because it's dangerous for her. Mimi cannot stay here like this. It can't happen. Mimi has to move out. Try to let your heart go to this is for my mother. Susan has never managed life completely on her own. As long as Mimi was in Susan's life, in Mimi's word, it was like two people with one leg holding on to each other. OK, I'll see you in just a little while, OK? All right, thanks. Okay. You bet. Mimi's going to go back to our hotel where we're staying. And she'll probably end up coming back to live near where I live so I can take care of her. This gives Susan a chance to stand on her own legs. It is a huge challenge for her. It is so important for Susan to see a living space, revitalized, open, free, is a symbol for what life could be like for her. You know, I think the family is really happy that we fixed up the house. Wow. I didn't even know there was a fireplace. But at the same time, the fact that we did a makeover in our room might inspire her a little bit, but I think it's going to be very temporary, and I think she's going to fill this house up again. A lot of mending that needs to go on in this family, right? It's this idea that there could be another way. A normal life. There could be yeah. another way to live life without bring along pain after pain, after, to really have life that feels good. It will take a while for Susan to realize that the family is not going to succumb to manipulation. It's so important at this point in time for the family to have the strong boundaries so Susan is allowed to have the space she needs to continue to grow. Wow, this is great. Now, I do feel that this openness and the chance of a normal life, it could be there. I think it's just what's in my mind is that I'm going to eventually have a large yard sale and make a bundle of money.
I am Charles, and I'm an artist. I love to paint most anything, but my favorite subject is the female figure. They're vulnerable, but yet they're at their most feminine when you see the whole body. Your model is the inspiration for the painting and the subject of the painting, all wrapped up in one beautiful body. I'm Kat, and I am Charles' model. I would say that Charles has probably got hundreds of paintings of, of naked ladies. When you walk into the studio now, I don't have that much open space anymore. Because like here, I started filling it up with stuff. It's perverse because it defeats my original purpose in buying that big building. Painting is the primary motivating force in my life. And I've lost the space to paint in. Uh, I'm Bo and Charles is my father. <laughs> This stuff is just like prison bars. They're just getting tighter and tighter. That's gonna mess with you mentally. I'm Bonnie, Charles is my father. My dad wasn't always a hoarder. When he and my mom were married, the house wasn't cluttered. He definitely had a lot of books and art supplies, uh, but they stayed in his studio. I'm Ginger, Charlie's ex-wife. When we were married, the clutter never was an issue. We were very happy together. Our early marriage was the happiest I'd ever been. He couldn't handle seeing me in pain, and uh, he withdrew from me. He barely spoke to me. I sought attention from somebody else when I confessed that I had done that, he really flipped out. What started my father down this hoarding path was just the uh, uh, losing his family. And I think hoarding became the new way to make himself happy. The hoarding does affect my dad's well-being because he can't create. And that's such a core thing for him. Painting is a bedrock, like uh, the Grand Canyon. Hard and it sustains you. And it seems like the hoarding is taking my purpose away from me. I'm not going to let anything get in the way of my dad's painting. If I got to wreck that place, I get, if I had to take a bulldozer to all that that's in there right now, I will. Hoarding has taken up all of this space in my life. I don't have any room to operate. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. The challenges that we're going to be facing on this particular day is his books and his art are everything. Everybody is going to get to work. We've got a team of 20 outside, so let's do it. I had no idea that the hoarding was this bad. I can't get over how many books he has. I'm just really glad that this is getting done now, not just for Charlie's sake, but for the sake of my children that would have to deal with his estate someday. I love mirrors. Mm -hmm. You know, they give you a, a depth in a painting. That's okay. another mirror. I can keep that one, right? I'm Dr. Michael Tompkins, and I specialize in the treatment of OC spectrum disorders, like OCD and hoarding disorder. So how many mirrors does a guy need? As many as you can get. Charles is in his illness. He's showing the classic signs of difficulty letting go because every item is unique. The bed frame and, and actually doesn't take up that much space. 
and it's an antique. But it's lovely. It's been sitting I, around. I, it's not a question about lovely. And it's not a it question. Is. It is. No. You can't give away beautiful things. All right, Charles. So then if you let go of a beautiful thing, what do you believe happens to you? You're diminished. Your soul is diminished. Beauty is a deeply held personal value for him. And so letting go of that thing is like actually letting go a part of who he is. I touch that every day. You touch the bed frame in, in my studio, bed? yeah. It leans up against the wall there. I don't have my family here. These things are substitutes for them. Things to keep me company. That thing keeps me company. and shut the door. Remember us? Inside the house, we start having a conversation about who's responsible, what parents oh, wow. did or didn't do. But I was just thinking when they were kids, uh, we were going through a stage where Charlie and I were uh, avoiding the subject of our pain. And we were just keeping it in and pretending yeah. like we were still the same happy family. Yeah. I realized that I was clenching my jaw all the time. I really was. <laughs> I was well, scared I was to death of you. every day. What would you just like to say to him, doggone it, Charles, if you could have then? You weren't there for me when I needed you. <laughs> Some of the big decisions in his life have been decisions about the solitary artist's life versus being a husband, a father, and he has never been able to actually balance that out in his life so that he could have both. I'm sorry. I know. You couldn't. We were neither one of us very strong. And I was bad to you, and I'm sorry. I've been holding that inside for 40 years. For them to open these lines of communication and start talking about this and start clearing the air is actually a wonderful thing. It's not a lot that we can do about this, that's happened. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. But we are here now, and we are here to help you. I would be here. You are I would drive you. here if they didn't fly me here. I would sleep outside if they didn't give me a hotel. And I, I would try to make your life better. You've made it better. We cleared the air with a lot of stuff. Now that our emotional baggage has been cleared out, now we can work on the physical baggage. Thank you. My feelings when it comes to the books and clothing that I rid myself of today, that was one of the pleasantest experiences I can remember, you know, just Toss, 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 toss. It was great. Now you can toss those. Charlie's handling this really well. I think he's cooperated remarkably well. And watch how the bird does not fall. All right, so let's go in and see the gallery, shall we? Let's do. Okay. Let's do it. All right. There were tears, just of complete joy and acknowledgement of Gosh, what he's gone through, and to see him have his artwork and his family back right here today. It's beautiful. He seemed overwhelmed with love and support, and that's exactly what I was hoping. I love you, baby. Thank you. There has been a change here for Charles. I really do deep down think that he's learned some things, and really uh, reaching out to his family and saying, I want to be here for you. In addition to you being a remarkable man, that I've enjoyed every minute of my time with you, uh, you have let go of a ton of stuff. Um, it was actually quite amazing. I am very proud of my dad. 
Now he can do his art and create, and I've made him happier, which is my whole thing. Just want you to be able to paint again and feel you're free to, to paint and express yourself and get back to. This is truly a miracle. I can paint now and uh, capture that beauty that I see in the world and that I love to express. Okay, I'm done. Okay. All right, you absolutely have to eat something or you're not going to school. So there's your fruit. My name is Julie. Okay, you guys, we have 10 minutes. I am 45 years old and I'm a mom and a photographer. Put your seatbelt on. Taylor, take the ball. I had never heard the word hoarder until two days ago. Um, do I believe I am now? Yes. I am disgusted. It almost makes me want to throw up. I mean, I, it's sickening. My name is Jennifer, and I'm 26 years old, and I am Julie's oldest daughter. The house is the best word that I would use is chaotic. When I was there, I was very, very lost, and I was wrapped up in her world and enabling her to continue to live like that. And I was drowning in her chaos. This is horrible. It's embarrassing, and the fact that I try to do something about it and I can't, makes me feel worse about myself. My name is Mark, I'm 48 years old, and Julie is my ex-wife. Things really started going downhill fairly early in our relationship. We definitely would fight, you know, about the, the mess. Definitely led to some pretty, you know, severe arguments. When you're a single parent of four kids with no job, all of a sudden, everything you have becomes important. It becomes what you have and all you have. And so it's very hard to let go. I feel in my heart that the one that is hurt the most is Jason, my son. I'm Jason, I'm 17, and Julie's my mom. I moved out because you know, I didn't have a room since it was so messed up. It's just a bad situation. For like a couple years, she said every day that she would clean my room, and then for, she's been saying that for like a year, and it hasn't been clean. Over time, it started saying, well, you need to stay with your dad for a week so I can clean your room. And then he would call me crying and say, I want to come home. But I couldn't get it done. It's just sad, because uh, I love her and I hate seeing her like this. If it were up to me, the kids would not be staying there now in the condition that the, the house is in. I mean, they're fantastic kids. I just think their lives would be a lot better if they didn't have to live in that mess. Hello, everyone. How are we today? Good. Good, good. good. Glad to hear it. My name is Sarah Barica and I am a certified professional organizer. Dr. Zazio is going to work with Julie. My name is Dr. Robin Zazio. I am a licensed clinical psychologist and I specialize in compulsive hoarding. And uh, I also wanna emphasize the respect that we need to have for the items that we are going to be moving in the house, okay? These belong to Julie and the girls and I don't want anybody to disrespect these items. Thank yes. you, and uh, there's a lot of valuables in junk, so yes, it's, it's, absolutely. Um, it's I apologize for that, but that's the way it is. Yes, exactly. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Thanks, everybody.
This is sick. Okay. Absolutely so sick. the white couch goes? Um, all that, I mean, obviously it's gross. It has to go, so it's going. Look, you want Mom, these? I know, I just need to go through it, yeah, though. Yeah, the bag is disintegrating. That's why I have them. Here. I know. Yeah, you I know just what? feel good if I go through Carol, it's I'm fine home. to bring it up and she can go through it. That's Thank a great idea. idea. Yeah. Thank you very Super. much. Okay. I'm just not very good at like letting people do things for me. Right, right. And you know what? That's why this process is so important for you, because you can't do it all. Are they not able to start in there because Sarah and I haven't gone no. through the front? people are getting started. That's where all the valuable stuff is. I would die so if that stuff let's broke. let's shift okay. and let's go in okay. the front. Okay? I'm sorry. That's where all the breakable stuff is, is in the pile, the clothes, so that it wouldn't break. Is everybody? I don't know. <clears throat> okay, now I have anxiety. Okay. 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 This is not okay. This is not, this is where I put, hid all the stuff. All right, no. I have like video cameras and like glass and breakable stuff. All right. And I didn't want it to break. I just want so her I to get a glimpse of the, the room, clothes. okay? Okay. Okay. Just take a second. Take a second, right? My $6,000 lenses were in the piles of clothes that are out there. Okay. So that's why I'm freaking out. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> what do you have in your hands right now? Are these things the that... most valuable thing to okay. me? Why okay, why don't we? Why don't you hand them to me? <clears throat> I feel badly for her, but I know that this is this is what needs to happen. But I, at the same time, I feel I feel it too. I feel really uh, overwhelmed at the same time. Do you want to have a seat? No, I just want them out of my living room for a second until okay. I can find my wedding room. I'll do is that. that. Okay, I'll take care of that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Hey guys, yeah. come on out. Mom. What? Can, I, can we open it? Do you want me to do that in there? Yeah. I'll go through. I'm I, you really know, upset. Everything's fine. I'll go through. I'll, I'll go through everything. You know I'll go through everything. I mean, my cameras were on the floor. Jen, my I'll lenses are in there. Jen. So what's going on? Well, I thought we were, I said I, we need to go through that stuff because my wedding ring is in there. And okay. My $6,000 photo lenses and my cameras are in there. Okay. And Who's in the living room right now? Everyone was. Every single person that is here was in there picking up my piles that my stuff was in. Okay. See, I put it in clothing so that it wouldn't get broken. Okay. Julie? Oh, come here. I'm sorry. I'm so upset. I know. Come here, though. I don't know where my lens is. Okay. Julie is getting increasingly anxious. She's overwhelmed. She is getting very, very distracted by a lot of emotional issues that she's having. In here. Okay, so Just... here's a box that we can use. You know, for the first hour, I got an A, and right now I'm getting an F. <laughs> no, you're at a D minus right now. Oh. Everybody hold up for a second. No, it's okay. Just... Everybody stop. Can you imagine what these people think of me? There's a few friendly neighborhood spiders. Okay, we highly recommend you use masks. This smell, I can smell it through my mask. So it's I. extremely strong. The garage uh, smells really, really bad. It's, I mean, it's full of poop, whatever else it is that I'm sure we'll find. Um, it smells really bad, really bad. That is the most disgusting thing I have ever seen in my life, ever. This is why I hate cats. <laughs> we don't have cats, but <laughs> they came in here. Yeah. I'm speechless about how much stuff is in here. And I knew that it was, so I, I was just paralyzed with absolute, I was overwhelmed completely. I'm trying to take care of four kids and a house. I couldn't do it. And I felt like a failure. Okay. Oh, you found your wedding video? Yeah. Okay. Good. Ready? I mean, I, I think I need to let go of it all. It's the only way to get better.
Yeah. Jennifer, this is taking every ounce of trust I have in you. I know. And you I, know that, right? I, I, Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer, I, you, did you go through this? Yeah. Are you sure? Let me, tell, let me get through this. No, it's fine, Mom. This is not from the garage, right? It is from the garage. What are you talking about? No, this is from Jason's room. I just room. saw her do it. It's from the, the garage. Room? Yes. That I swear to God on okay. my life. Here, just this give is, it to me. That's my underwear. This is from first grade. No, it's not. Taylor, this and this is not my this is stuff. This is the stuff from the garage. No, it's not. I put this here. That is not. Those underwear were in the, mine. Box the garage. No, they're not. Yes, they were. This is the most embarrassing underwear. conversation I've ever had in my life that I'm ready to leave. So let's go. I it's it's fine. Let's, I okay. promise you. I wouldn't lie Can to you. Can you get them now? Or I would we'll leave. And I wish someone would respect what I'm saying at the moment. I can understand that you're upset. And I understand no, you that you're can't. No, I, under, I can see that you are physically upset. I understand that you are upset. Then don't argue with me when I say I'm something. I'm not. I'm not. Under, I'm not arguing with you. I, it's just that I've been so good I can about letting everybody do awesome. everything, and you, I say one thing, and I get this. You have been incredible. You've got all your family here to support. I don't want my family right now because they're the ones that embarrass me. Okay, but that wasn't intentional, right? It wasn't that my underwear was in the truck or my stuff was in the truck. It wasn't that it was thrown away. It's that they, no one trusted me enough to believe me. You know what I would love? Is if I came over here and you're right, you're like, right, if my mom says that that's not from the garage, then she knows it's not, because I do know. I was really nervous that um, she was going to walk away because we're so close and, and we've worked so hard. And I, and I understand where she's coming from, but I, I was scared. Do you want those to give them these? Here. Where's she? Part of the problem is just relocating stuff, which we don't want to do. Have you walked through here yet? I don't want to right now, though, because I want to appreciate it as much as I really want okay. to. Okay, Because I'm just in a very bad place at the moment. Okay, let's keep working okay. in here with what the time we have left. There is a lot of garbage that we forgot on the side. We're gonna go. Can we get it out? Just go. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, good. My mom um, wanted things that she didn't want anybody to touch in here and it was just her safe room to keep stuff. I feel like your room is the one room that's been neglected. It's up to you, but I want to know if you want us to go over or you to go over and to tell her mom, it's time to work on my room and I'd like you to focus on that. Jennifer begged me to do this really fast and then I will, okay, right after this. This is all okay. garbage. No, it's not. Can you not? I need you to not come in here and start directing things, okay? I need you to just let me do this. Because so it's learn. important to Jennifer. Yes, I am going to do your room. So, Taylor, how are you feeling about mom saying that she's just going to go ahead and take care of that on her own? Um, well, she has to promise me that she's actually going to do it and get well, all of her do you stuff trust out. Or not? If you don't, yeah. tell me now and we'll go let, do let it. Let me tell you what my concern is, okay. is that um, yesterday you said you were going to take care of it and nothing happened. You know why? Because I decided I needed to sleep because I hadn't been to bed th for three days. So I thought they'll understand that I can do it today. Okay. Will you be confident that I really will do that? My mom promised me that she was going to clean it, so it's going to get cleaned just like the rest of the house. My concern about Taylor, Jason, and Kylie is that they're really hoping that this is going to be the end, and we're not at the end. Certainly, we made remarkable progress, but there's a long ways to go. I haven't seen the closet in a long time. I'm just looking. <laughs> Sorry. There's a closet here, huh? <laughs> I'm really happy with my room. I was surprised that, because I've never seen my room clean in three years, and it's all set up, and yeah, I'd be happy to stay here. Hopefully she's taken something from this, and, and we could move forward with it, but it, I know that it's, I mean, nothing, no one's gonna change in, in two days. I don't have any question at all about my being able to keep it clean. I mean, that's not an issue for me. What the issue is, is the emotions that this brought out, I have to get help for. 
my final role with Julie will be to ensure that she continues to uh, follow up with aftercare uh, with an, a specialist in compulsive hoarding, but also to work in conjunction with a personal organizer to keep her house in order. Dr. Zazio very effectively removed the block, but removing the block also removed all those emotions that came with it. And so right now, that, those are right here. And that's what I have to, from this day forward, get, seek help for. I don't need a maid, I need a psychiatrist. <laughs> My name is Chris. I have so much stuff. I still have toys from when my 17-year-old was a baby. I have everything because I just, I, I can't part with it, but I know I need to. I am Mary and I'm Chris's mom. And she was just a normal kid, uh, never any serious problems of any kind, except in terms of cleaning up. <laughs> she, she was always a problem with that. Do we have any glue? Oh, I want to see those when you're done. My name is Alex. I am Chris's oldest daughter. I don't actually live with my mom. I mostly stay with my dad. You look like a soccer mom there. <laughs> Every time I go over to my mom's house, she starts with the phrase, oh, don't mind, you know, you're gonna have to step over some stuff to get through the door, which inevitably I do. My younger daughter, Riley, is 10. She's in fourth grade. It's really messy and everything's in a way. We can't do anything. My girls never really say anything to me about the house because I know they don't want to hurt my feelings. But my older daughter, she spends a lot of time at friends' houses and I don't blame her. I mean, I wouldn't bring anyone back here. I have had no one in my house for over a year. No one. Early Sunday morning, I went into labor. Uh, Put the car seat in the car, packed up the diaper bag, his little outfits and blankets and diapers, and went to the hospital. Sorry. His heart wasn't beating. They brought him to me and I held him. He had a little gown and a hat and he's wrapped up in a blanket. And he just looks like he was asleep. He's perfectly healthy, fine baby. He just was dead <laughs> for no other reason that the cord wrapped around his neck and strangled him. After Aiden died, she kept having the nurses bring him back and it got to a point where I told the nurses don't bring him back again because he was obviously decomposing. I believe that's when she started going downhill even more. For a long time, it was just anything to keep my mind busy. That is cute. I think I was overcompensating for my, my other two kids. That is my daughter's size. She wears a 5'6", and this is brand new, I can tell. Just give them whatever they want, because it's now a reality that they could die tomorrow. I'm Randy. I'm Chris's ex-husband. It was my place for 15 years. And then when she moved in, basically just trashed it within a few months. And it just sickens me or makes me mad, you know, kind of both things. So um, I'm just disappointed, but that's kind of how she is. 
My sister and her both sleep on couches in, in the living room. They used to have a bed in the bedroom, but there wasn't enough room for it and it was never used, so they ended up getting rid of that. My sister also has a room that she never uses because the ladder is inaccessible. I'm sure she'd like to have a place to play, bring her friends, and uh, very rarely does friends go over there because, you know, of the mess and whatever. To use the restroom, we have to go through a set of doors, which usually you kind of have to put your full weight against it because there's always something behind the door blocking it. We don't brush our teeth in there, though, because there is no sink. We brush our teeth in the kitchen. I Great, turn it off. That doesn't look like Pookie, does it? <laughs> no. I think she has lived in fear that somebody's going to report her, especially Randy, because he would do something like that. Just, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I do my best and what's best for the kids. I try to put them first. All right, have a seat. Ready? It, it just terrifies me, the thought of someone taking my kids. It would kill me to lose them. Day one, we got a lot of work ahead of us. Yes. I am Matt Paxton, a hoarding specialist. What are you, how are you feeling? Are you anxious, excited, a little bit of everything? A little bit of everything. I, I'm ready to get started and a little apprehensive of people touching my stuff, but I know it's for a good reason. Okay. Chris's place is kind of just a mixture of her past and her future. She doesn't really have any now part of her life. She's just saving a lot of stuff from the past and she's buying a lot of stuff for later. If you get nervous, you pull one of us aside, okay? okay. And the guys will not bring anything out of the house while we're stopping. Thank you, I appreciate okay. it. You, again, you are in charge. Yes. We need yes. her to be able to focus and, and really enjoy this process so we have a whole second day of cleaning. If we, sh if we push her too hard on the first day, we'll be shut down the second day and we don't want that. Stay or go? Stay. What about this one? Yes, I want to keep that. What about this? I'll keep it. Hey, okay, this one? Oh, yeah, I want to keep this. Yeah, yeah, and your grave digger. Uh-huh. So what about this? Keep it. Riley, I'm hearing a lot of keep it. <laughs> oh, but she has a whole bunch of giveaway. I'm Renee Renardi. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder, compulsive hoarding, and trichotillomania. It's very frustrating for some therapists and certainly for professional organizers, I can imagine. When people want to look at every single item, that's not at all unusual with hoarding behavior. Yes! I know Zim. So I'm hearing Riley a lot of keep, 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 keep. Does this still fit? Yeah. Okay. They're doing a good initial sort here. Okay. Was there a shirt that went with this or was it just pants? Just pants. Okay. It's just not a fast process to be done in a way that she's going to learn from. So we want her making the decisions, not somebody else. Flowers you said could go, correct? Well, let me see which ones they are. As a cleaner, you want to get the whole house done. And midday, we just had to make the decision that's not going to happen. Uh, Chris has found a pace that works for her. Oh, I need this. These two I'm keeping. This I need, it has a bucket, it says keep. Oh yes, we're gonna keep those. It's a train track. Okay. Look, just focus on all the stuff I'm getting rid of. You're doing awesome, but I'm, look behind you. Chris has the, the OCD issue where she needs to touch everything. I believe most of these can go. Because of sheer time, she can't touch everything in this house. How about, this is a test. Let's look through five items in here. Okay. And try to make a decision on the whole bucket. Let's five things real quick? Let's, yeah, things that we can't see. Let's open them up. Okay, this can go. Okay. Yep, that can all go. That can go. It's beautiful, but I don't need it. Great reasoning there. We're not guessing, is it nice or not? Because I know nice. it's nice. Okay, so five don't items, all five you said could go. Can I take that whole bucket to donate? Because we've had five out of five we're donating. She is a control freak. I can't is really say personal? get rid of it if I don't know yeah. what it is. If she refocuses her control somewhere else, somewhere real, like a relationship with her daughters, and she got confidence of having control in that part of her life, she would no longer have this need 
to yeah, direct the control true. somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? It's I like, do know what you're saying. If this someone is, went in your house practice. and put stuff I, in a box and you didn't know what it was, and you say, do yeah. you need it? You're like, well, what, well, what did you put yeah, in there? I, I totally get it. That's why I'm pushing you on this, because it's hard. Well, it's impossible. I, I can't tell you yes or no if I don't know what's in there. Footprints. Wow, I don't rem even remember those. Maybe I did see him, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. God, look at his little hand. Yeah. It's a group of items that she's really been avoiding, and it's something that she does need to address in order to move forward with her grieving process. For like, um, probably about a month afterwards, I slept with this because the blanket smelled like him. Yeah. If we're in a pharmacy, for example, she can't go down the baby aisle. She can't smell that, um, the baby lotion. It just brings it right back. Doesn't it smell like it Doesn't anymore. smell like him anymore. Yeah, I wish that smell stayed forever. But I'm still gonna keep it. <laughs> thing to remember with hoarding is that if it were so easy to change, they would have changed it on their own. So it has nothing to do with how much they love their children. It's a behavior that they haven't been able to change on their own. And so it requires oftentimes the assistance of others in order to move forward. Little pig. Yeah. Riley, hey you. Hey. Hi. Hi Just Mary. in time. Oh my goodness. We went through Aiden stuff. That was hard. Yeah. I know, baby. She did great. Yeah, I knew that would be hard. Mm -hmm. She has an enormous amount of therapy that she needs to go through, and she doesn't really think she needs it. Oh, <laughs> what can I do for you? Nothing. <laughs> can you cry it out? Uh. I'm pretty sure she's going to fill this house back up. If she doesn't go to therapy, this house will be filled right back up, and the kids will be yanked within the year. Hey, come up here real quick and look at this. You can't put any go any higher because of your defense. But this is your aftercare. This is what you really got to work on. If we had a day, we would knock through this. I'm not oh, I'm without, sure. Without without any concern. Whether I liked it or not. Well, I think you're going to go through it in a couple days on your own anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have the tools now. See, now instead of looking at it, thinking, oh gosh, now I'm looking at it going, okay, that can stay, that goes, that goes, that goes. Exactly. You're more action prone. Mm -hmm. Chris's internal script hasn't been as well rehearsed for some of the hoarding thoughts and acquisition thoughts, so it's easier for her to change them. For other individuals who've been rehearsing this script for many, many years, it's a little bit more of a challenge just because it's so familiar. Well, but this once is I Alex's see the results, room, man. We can make her some room. You've got enough tiles to finish it. Mm -hmm. So we've got the space now, and you've got the ability. Yes. She's so enthusiastic about it now. She's really grab the concept. Oh man, she jumped right into it. Let me get bags. Hold on a second. I ain't got time to wait for you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I do think she'll follow through with it. I'm very proud of her. Trash, 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 trash. Okay, we're getting into a lot of trash now. Yeah, I'm just Which is great. scooping it out. Yeah, I wanted it for me. Of course I wanted it for me. But I also wanted it for my kids. So they can have their friends over and feel comfortable spending time here without being embarrassed or ashamed. <laughs> Close, but no stuff. Riley's room is done, and it is really cool. I mean, this is a kid, 10-year-old kid, that's never had a room. And tonight, she's got a room. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> what do you think? It's awesome. <laughs> She's like, Mom, can I invite someone over? She has never, ever asked me that before. It's totally different, huh? It's better than tools laying around and half put together stuff, huh? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It feels great. And I want to keep that feeling. You know, if not being ashamed, it takes so much energy to hide a big secret and not tell and don't let people in your house, and if they only knew. I hate that feeling. I don't ever, ever. This feeling is so much better. I've never seen the floor. <laughs> Riley, have you seen this much floor before? Mm, nope, 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 nope. Try this one.
yeah, I'm really happy with how she did and now she feels able to have some fun and entertain uh, both for her and her girls. Every time I'm at a store and say, oh, that's cute, I tell myself, okay, which feeling would you prefer? You wanna be happy and show off your house or ashamed and try to hide it? You just have to keep that in my head. My name is Todd, I'm 29 years old. I'm a serial hobbyist. I have a problem with organization. My name is Robin and I am Todd's girlfriend. When you walk into Todd's house, there's magazines, there's books, there's dirty towels, there's garbage, there's things that have probably been there for, for years. You know, if you were to ask me where something belongs, I couldn't tell you, like I don't, I don't know where anything belongs. The bathrooms, uh, I mean, I wouldn't even go there in there with a hazmat outfit on. There's leftover food containers. He's been into uh, computer games. He's been into video games. He's been into uh, Warhammer, the little figurines. I would say that on average, each new hobby cost me at least $1,000. He went and has material probably to make about 50 different knives. He joined a knife club. He's gone to shows. He has, buys all this stuff, and I'm not sure if he's even made a single knife. The state of that house is in currently is acceptable. It's acceptable to me. I just sort of, you know, take it or leave it. This is, this is me. This is how I live. My name is Tim, and I'm Todd's father. I've often struggled with why he does this. This is trash. Uh, but he doesn't seem able to throw it away. And I don't know why. How do you form an emotional attachment to an empty bottle of hot sauce? I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't know if he has just a lot of anxiety about throwing things away, if it just makes him feel a lot safer to have that stuff. My name is Kathy, I'm Todd's mom. I, I really don't know what the root of the problem is. You know, when he's a little kid, he was a messy little kid. But a lot, most kids are messy. And that didn't raise any warning signs particularly. I think it's always been just something that he's done, and I think it's getting just progressively, progressively worse. These tendencies, if they're not addressed, can get out of really out of control, and um, you end up with people who become. Um, basically hermits. I've lived here for three years and I think I've only had six people in my house. It could get to that point where um, he doesn't have um, friends or close family or, um, or our relationship. I don't want to live like this anymore. And I don't want to live, I don't want to have a future like this because the future my future of living like this, I don't think is a very happy one. It's got to the breaking point where it either gets fixed now or um, it's never gonna get fixed and it's only gonna get worse. Hello. Hey, how's nice it going? to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Sarah. My name is Sarah Barica and I am a certified professional organizer. Is there anything in the home that you know right off the top of your head that you're gonna be okay with that can go in the trash? Like, <laughs> no. Todd has the potential to be a very serious hoarder. It is a progressive disorder, and so there could be a point where Todd may be at a level where there is no turning back. Okay, let's go.
I'm feeling this morning there's a little trepidation. I know that there's people in my house. They're touching my things. Okay. What's the tapping about? Oh, I don't know. Anxiety? Anxiety, I guess. Okay. Ninety-six. So this shirt is thirteen years old. Yeah, that's a keeper. Alrighty. When we started the morning off, Todd had to go through a lot of his clothing. So this is a keep, keep, keep. Yeah, that's keep. I was um, willing, kind of, to just let Todd decide whatever he wanted. Keep that. Definitely keep that. My name is Dr. Robbie Ludwig. I'm a psychotherapist, and I specialize in working with people who have anxiety disorders. What are you noticing? What's coming up for you? Big memories and a lot of anxiety about getting rid of stuff and be like, but, but, you know, uh -huh. like I remember stuff, like where I got the shirt. So maybe that's something you could work on. The shirt doesn't hold the memory. The mm -hmm. shirt doesn't hold a anything special. It's just simply an object that the memory is within you mm -hmm. and the experience is yours. I think Robin is going to need to be the voice of reason because these are really habits that he's developed over a lifetime. And so it might creep up on him when he's feeling anxious, holding on to more things and having difficulty getting rid of some of the things that he's acquired. You know, just seeing how all you interact with Todd, kind of tiptoeing around a bit, it's very easy to get sucked into Todd's world, which is how we got here in the first place. Until he really gets a sense of that, Robin is going to need to make many interventions along the way. Some of this isn't going to be comfortable for Todd, so we may need to take a little bit of a confrontational or tougher love approach to not get sucked in. I don't want to have to be that person that's like, okay, you have to do this. You know, standing over him and telling him what he needs to take care of and what he doesn't. Can we just toss that whole thing? No. Maxim trash, law school trash. This is an interesting poster. That's trash. Trash. I notice you seem to be able to make decisions a little bit quicker about what goes in the trash. I want to get rid of the stuff that I need, want to get rid of. I want to keep the stuff I want to keep. I want to move on. Todd was on this uh, disposing high. He was getting rid of everything, and it annoyed Robin because Robin felt that he wasn't really thinking about what he was doing. Go. His new focus is now throwing things away. I'm just going to throw everything away. He's going to go through all this, and he's going to get rid of it, but then once is he actually processing like the emotional attachment that he has? You know, tomorrow is it going to be like, gosh, like I really wish I wouldn't have done that because you know, everyone leaves, but I'm going to be here. Do you feel you know him so well? You feel he's avoiding something? Mm-hmm. I'm tired of this stuff being here. I feel like we spent a lot of time talking that we could be working. He didn't really understand that he gets stuck in an all-or-nothing kind of frame of mind and. Prior to us getting here, it was keeping everything. And then after a period of time, it was getting rid of most things. One of the reasons why he never sat down to address it is because it does make him irritable. It does make him angry. And if he could somehow avoid it altogether, either by getting rid of everything or keeping everything, then he doesn't have to feel annoyed, irritable, or deal with these unresolved issues that are really paralyzing him. You're thinking, oh my god, this is so annoying. I don't want to do this right now. But this is the exact reason, this is what, how we're going to fix it. I think this is kind of like a turning point. I just don't care anymore. I just want to get it done. The problem is that if we push you hard enough, you're going to do whatever we want you to do. But is that really solving the problem? Todd definitely has this idea, or needed to have this idea, that you know, once he got the concept, he was good to go, and he was all cured. You keep saying, I just want to get this done. I just want to get this yeah. done. Stop talking, I just want to get it done. Yeah. But yeah. the whole part, the whole reason we're here is to do the talking. For me, it's about the process and making sure that this goes well, and that later on, you're not you know, upset that we got rid of you know, 17 boxes of stuff. I just want to, you know, I want to deal with it now as opposed to dealing it when there's not a professional here to, to talk through it. I don't understand why y'all won't take victory for an answer. Like, I don't need this stuff. 
Like, th like this stuff, like I can't replace that. The rest of this stuff, if I want it again, I'm gonna buy it again. You know, it would be very easy for Todd and Robin to feel like they have had a victory, which in some, in some ways they have, that they've resolved the issue to some extent. They have a clean house, they're moving towards their goal, but the danger comes with, did we really address the symptom of the problem? And the symptom of the problem is something we can't always get to in a short period of time. We had a lot of accomplishments today. We tackled the upstairs and went from 17 boxes to one box. 17 boxes, done. Done. Robin's face is priceless right now. She's I'm so happy. pasted him a smile. Before we couldn't live together, we couldn't do activities in his house together. So this is really just transformed um, our relationship together. I think this is totally going to move us on in our, in the next step in our relationship. The house has never been in a condition where she could move in. The dog, maybe kids in the future, like that couldn't have happened here two days ago. And now it can. Todd has a long road ahead of him. This is the hardest part. This is where the tough stuff begins. Um, he's now got to do this on his own. He has Robin, so that's a benefit. You know, he's gonna have to work on this over and over and over again. It's gonna be like being an alcoholic. Every day, I have to think about, I'm not gonna do this. And I think maybe it'll become more natural, it becomes like a habit. I don't think it'll ever be something that I won't have to think about and I won't have to deal with. I don't think Todd's cured, but this was a really big victory. This, this is amazing. This has transformed where he lives, and it's now made a space for us to live together. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help. I appreciate I'm it. Glad. Robin will be moving in in two months, and I want it to look exactly like it does now, this clean. I'm Lisa. All set. All right. We'll get a sage. And I'm a fortune teller. There are energies all around us. And some people are more inclined Thank you. to understand what that energy is than others. But the moon's sound on the path you'd like to know about. I don't know how to explain that. It's just sometimes I know things I shouldn't know and this is from now till the first full moon of the new year. I have lots of feng shui books and zen things. I appreciate the donation. But for some reason, I can't seem to get it right in this house. I am Mary Jane. I've been a friend of Lisa's for over 20 years. The last time I was in the house, it was overwhelming. It's like an avalanche that's really really overtaken her. She has two bathrooms in the house, and one she does not use, and the other one isn't safe or healthy at all. I'm doing pretty good at wiping out the roaches in my bathroom. One roach at a time. Next time you have jasmine rice in one of the little microwave cups, fill it with soapy water so they all drown. And guess what? It works. See, this is what happens when you put them. Look. I'm Gene. I've known Lisa for 24 years. I haven't been in her home in years because she stopped allowing people to come in. I had a feeling that she was a hoarder from the stuff out in the yard. And I asked her one day, I says, are you a hoarder? She says, no. This is reusable stuff for her business and her artwork and her jewelry that she does. I'm Dina stewart Hitsky. I'm with Administration of Resources and Choices Elder Services. We put her 
in a hotel, but we exhausted our funding in having to keep her in a hotel for this long of a stay. She has three more days before she's gonna be homeless. I can't be in this situation. I know that if I don't have this home, I have no place to live, and I will die on the streets. Lisa! Hi. Good morning. Hi. I'm Dr. Hey. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and hoarding disorder. Whoa. Wow. This That's an interesting welcome we have there. It's my art studio. OK. This is your art studio? Yeah. OK. Lisa stuck is literally coming out of the seams of the house. There are just walls of stuff making it dangerous for anyone to be there. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. There's been an emergency alert on all the phones. OK. Monsoon, the streets are completely flooding. I'm going to need to bring 15 crew members in to work on the inside. I know there's nowhere to stand, but I have to do it. We okay. only have two days, and if anybody can do it, you can. OK, hon, thank uh, you. Everybody, come in. It's going to be tough, but find a spot to stand. We've never done it like this before. But we're going to do it. We're just packing everything up, getting it out into the carport to create a space inside the living room for us to work. Is this a keep or not? That's a keep. I use the fortune telling top on top of that. What about these? Are these trash or keep? Oh, no. I use those in my business. That's all business. I want you to head over here, sweetheart. Oh, my game board. No, 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 no. I'll get it. Oh, my God. I'll get it. Oh, my God. I use that for my fortune telling. There's actually two of them. Uh, I got it. Oh, my God. They're throwing out the bottles with the, the nets. Yep. Don't throw them out, because those are my kachinas for this year's project for all souls. Well, you saw the kachinas in my bedroom. What you size You don't have skull? space for this kind that of thing. That stays out in the carport. Oh, no. That's an art piece. Oh, my God. I saved that for two years. OK. Keep that, please, for now. Oh, my God. Whoa, why are you just throwing out all my papers? That's what I make my stuff out of, is those recycled papers. My business is over. Oh, my God, they're throwing out the stuff I use. Code enforcement is asking that we get rid of the back half of everything in that yard. Clear? Clear. Let's go. This was in a gold thing with my other ducks. This was put on the door before we got here. Yeah. And the news is it can come down. Oh, that's fabulous. Everything's in compliance. Your house is in compliance. Your bathroom's in compliance. You've got the backyard in compliance. 
Yeah, I appreciate you guys that did all this. It's just, you know, there's lots of issues that are still going to be going on, so. Well, mostly we want for you to be able to wheel around with your wheelchair in here. Use some of the furniture as it's meant to be done. You've got at least two spaces to create. This room gets too hot. I specialize in hoarding disorder, and many of the times people are thrilled at all the help that they've received. In Lisa's case, she is so focused on what she's lost that she can't see what she's gained. If we didn't pull this off today, she had no place to live. I know I should be really excited because the red tag's going down, but the joy of being back in the house and the joy of the house being the way it is is overshadowed by what I've had to give up. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to a &E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.